from the food you eat. Last year, our crop yield was down about 30%. To the air you breathe. It's itchy throat, coughing a lot, sneezing a lot. And even the bugs that bother us. What I'm dealing with would be one of the symptoms of climate change would be an increase in uh, disease vectors. We are dealing with a warming planet and rising waters. The problems that we're having today are different than the ones that we're having 30 or 40 years ago. We head to the fields, the doctor's office, the rooftops and the marshes to show you how the changing climate is changing our lives. This isn't just a story about weather and the climate. This is a story about our food, our water. This is a story about our tourism, our sports. And climate change is really affecting all these aspects of our life. I couldn't even come out, really. Laura Lau is an avid gardener. But being outside sometimes, the, you know, with the pollen and everything would really, um, you know, limit my time out there. Like so many of us, she suffers from allergies. Sneezing, runny nose, runny eyes, itchy throat, coughing a lot, sneezing a lot. All of this leads her here. So full deep breaths in. Her doctor, Mark Goldstein, says she's not alone. We certainly have increased the number of patients for seasonal issues. Dr. Goldstein works at the asthma center. Over his more than 30 years in practice, he says not only have cases increased, but the allergy season might be starting earlier. The lengthening of the time that we're frost free has definitely been documented. The next two. A study by Climate Central, an independent organization that analyzes climate data, determined the time between the last freezing day of spring and first freezing day of fall has extended in Philadelphia by 29 days. This means a longer growing season. During the springtime, we're seeing warming come in earlier and earlier. Our plants start to bloom a little bit earlier. They start to pop. Carbon dioxide is the greenhouse gas that contributes most to human caused climate change. We are adding more of that to our atmosphere at an unprecedented rate. And that is what is leading to our overall warming. CO2 concentrations vary annually and peak in May, the same time as tree pollen. Climate Central says 2019 global concentrations are set to be the highest in at least 2 million years. With increase in CO2 production, plants are being more vigorous in their growth and more vigorous in terms of the pollen production. And the pollen count proves it. The Asthma Center's Adam Cooper collects a daily air sample from the roof of its center city building. Over a 24-hour period, there's a, the slide becomes covered. Counted under a microscope, they're noticing the slides becoming more crowded. I think the intensity of the pollen at its peak has really been higher, and the number of days in which we've had those peak pollen days has also, I think, increased over time. Pollen is measured in grains per cubic meter per 24 hours. According to the Asthma Center, tree pollen counts are considered extreme when they rise above 1,000. Think your worst symptoms. There have been five times in the last 18 years where the number has exceeded 6,000. Last year was the highest on record, 6,889. All of this means more people, like Lau, seeking treatment. I was just taking um, allergy pills, but it just got to the point where nothing was working. She now gets a monthly shot so she can enjoy the outside air. Now I can do gardening, I can go out with my friends. This is the front line of fighting mosquitoes in the state of Delaware. Mosquito Control gathers samples to get a better look at their enemy. We're looking for any kind of mosquito larvae. Because of the recent rainy weather, it's difficult to capture the pest. Adult mosquitoes haven't had a chance to actually lay the mm -hmm. eggs on the, on the mud surface. But he knows they're coming. They do every year, and it's getting worse. The mosquito seasons are getting longer and stronger. Climate Central's latest information on mosquitoes shows the bloodsuckers growing season in the Wilmington area used to be an average of 117 days each year, but they are now bothering us for an average of 142 days. That's 25 days more. Woods Plackey credits a temperature jump in Delaware increasing by 3.1 degrees over the last 50 years. That's the fourth fastest warming state in the country, according to Climate Central. One, two, maybe three degrees does not sound like a lot. But let's compare that to a fever. When your temperature, your body temperature goes up by just a couple of degrees, often that puts you in the hospital. And that's what we're doing to our planet. With the heat comes more rain. With more rain comes, well, you get it, mosquitoes. We're particularly interested in Delaware in mosquitoes and ticks and what that'll mean in the future. Bill Meredith heads Delaware Mosquito Control. He says one model shows in 40 to 50 years his state will have the climate of South Carolina. He looks back one year to recognize there's a problem. Last May and June, we had one of the worst mosquito eruptions statewide we've ever seen, and it was associated with a couple weeks of continuous downpour. 
Uh, if that was to become the norm, wow. <laughs> Things be a lot different in Delaware, and I'd need a much bigger budget. Of course, taxpayers fund his department, but Meredith says the effects of more mosquitoes won't just be financial. With warmer weather, things will just go that much more rapidly during the season, particularly for things like uh, disease buildup, disease transmission. West Nile virus is no joke, and uh, I don't want to get that for sure. John Peck and his kayak co-pilot, Nellie, spends a lot of time on Delaware waterways. He's concerned about the greater mosquito and tick risks that come with climate change. Certainly there's been, the water level's been higher the last couple of years. So there will be more spraying and fogging on our streets and more sampling in the marshes, all combating climate change and the pesk risk that comes with it. We didn't use our irrigation at all last year. A lot has changed in the almost 45 years Pam Mount's been farming in New Jersey. Her family's Terhune Orchards grows veggies, apples, cherries, blueberries, and more. One of the main things that's a problem at this point is the uncertainty of the weather. And that means different impacts for each crop, especially as New Jersey's climate gets wetter and warmer. We have to protect some of the fruits from too much rain. At the Atlantic City Airport, one of the closest reporting stations to many berry farmers in the region, 2018 was the wettest year on record by a lot. The area picked up 68.6 inches of precipitation, crushing the 2009 record by more than seven inches. But that wasn't a fluke year. Precipitation trends are ticking upward. Comparing all years since records began in 1959, four of the five wettest years have all occurred since 2006. As it gets wetter, it's harder to control uh, any kind of disease. Peter Outermans is a berry researcher for Rutgers University. His specialty is disease control. The leaves never dry out, the blossom clusters stay wet, and it allows fungus to start to develop. His job isn't just to understand crop disease, but to determine how farmers can handle it. With climate change, it's harder to predict when we have to invoke disease management tools. In the future, he says farmers may need to protect their berries from rain under plastic covers, but that comes at a cost that might get passed down to you. That could help a lot. That could help improve quality, but obviously that's going to be more expensive mm -hmm. to do. And costs might not be the only change. This is the hybrid. Rutgers Nick Vorsa is crossbreeding berries. One focus is heat tolerance. So this one we think we'll have a higher heat stress tolerance than ours. Climate Central says New Jersey's average annual temperature has increased three degrees since 1970. It's the sixth fastest warming state in the country. Vorsa says the main variety of New Jersey blueberry grown today was developed almost 70 years ago. That variety was basically um, selected for the climate back in the 1950s. So he's working on breeding a blueberry native to Florida with our Jersey berry. What we're hoping to do is to develop varieties that are better suited to our climate, our conditions, our heat. If successful, it can be passed along to local farmers. So does that mean my South Jersey blueberry is going to taste different in the future? Possibly, possibly. Back on Mount's farm, they're adapting to the challenges of climate change. They have to. When you get down to staying in business or going out of business, people will do what they have to do in order to make it all happen. Crystal Cly, NBC 10 News.